Hello, my name is William Bond. I'm from University of Cape Town and I hope to attend the workshop and uh, we'll talk briefly there on forest patches. So I was interested in the last question as a priority one and thinking that uh, what's particularly useful and important for us is to understand better is the dynamics of forest and grasslands at Mosaic and how it works. And I'm particularly interested in what happens at the boundary, at the edges, which are often very sharp. And here's an example in the in South Africa in the Drakensberg. Uh, here's an example in Gabon, in Central Africa. Again, very sharp boundaries between the savannas and the forest. Here's an example from Madagascar up in Ambohitanteli, just after a fire, and you can see the dead Erica shrubs here. Grass is regrowing, and the forest looks as though it's hardly been damaged at all, even though the fire has burned right to the edge. Here's the same sort of thing now in North America, where a prairie fire has just burnt, and uh, this is the first year after recovery, and you see the forest patches were undamaged, contrary to uh, what many people think grass and fires do to forest patches. So why don't the fires penetrate the forest? We know why in terms of fuels and um, changes in microclimate, but we don't understand how the forest recovers so quickly from being singed at the edges. Now there are a couple of papers. Bill Hoffman looked at uh, thick bark and found it to be um, thicker near the forest margins of the Amazon than in the forest interior. Annabel Cardozo, working in Gabon, uh, found there was a distinct forest margin community different from the interior forest and uh, functionally different too, which was able to resist fire and recover rapidly when burnt, contrasting with the internal trees. And she also studied the grasses and found that many of the forest patches were protected by different grass species that were less flammable uh, near the margin. So even before the fires reached the forest, they were going out. So what's going on in Madagascar? Well, according to the deforestation hypothesis, we would expect the forest to be more or less continuous. With uh, human activity, grasslands would have spread and the edges of the forest would be um, what were in a forest before, so the raw edges. Trees that might persist would be those that might be pre-adapted to grasslands environments. The alternative hypothesis is that forests and grasslands have existed in a mosaic of alternative stable states for many years. And if that is the case, one might expect that the forest patches would have a distinct margin um, of fire resistant and uh, light tolerant tree species with a couple of fire adapted savanna trees and perhaps also some pre adapted trees able to survive in the well lit fire prone environment. We were able to look at this when we ran a course um, on grassy ecosystems some years ago and as part of the field trip we decided to look at the question and there we are in our uh, field party. We worked in Ankafobe Reserve, which I'm sure some of you will know about. And we looked at the forest interior, the forest margin, and uh, savanna patches. There's the forest interior, tall trees, thin bark, forest margin, which looks very much like um, African forest margins because it shares some of the same species. And then we also went to see some tapir savanna woodlands and here's the party having a lunch break and here's tapir Eupaca bogeri uh, re-sprouting vigorously after a burn just like savanna trees all over the world so the results of our study taking transects in each of these places was that there was a distinct forest community in terms of species that diverged from the savanna uh, trees and with the forest margin trees also being distinct, um, with distinct characterized by distinct species. 
What's more, the functional traits that we tried to measure were also distinct with basal sprouting or deep bud protection on the open savanna side uh, with no sprouting and no bud protection in the forest. And they diverged in terms of their uh, growth, height growth st strategies with the forest trees branching uh, seldom so that they go vertically up where savanna trees branch much lower down. So from this study, this very brief preliminary study and subsequent observations, we think that there's a suite of species, and here they are, that sit on forest margins. Uh, some of them are widespread. They also occur in Africa, like Harangana and Prima. Uh, but some seem to be belong to the endemic family of the Sarcolinaceae, which including Leptolina. Um, and that's, I think, particularly interesting and needs further following up. When we look at these species, we think that they're good candidates for protecting forest margins um, and to help provide a ring of fireproofing around remaining forest patches. We think you should use these, we should explore these in preference to planting pines, eucalypts, Australian acacias and casuarinas, which are highly flammable and more likely to carry fires into the interior of the forest. We've seen these things planted, by the way, which is why we're concerned. And uh, furthermore, these plants are invasive in other parts of the world. So you're creating a massive problem by planting these kinds of trees. So we're next on this uh, problem of the forest grass and mosaics. This is a very preliminary study, needs a lot more work. Uh, functional trait analysis is progressing at pace in Africa and Brazil, so we can borrow their methods. I think the grasses in the forest margins are particularly interesting, and I've seen some very extraordinary grasses in some places that bear further study. And the trait analysis is critical, and it could be of really real use for forest restoration. Species such as Harangana have uh, root suckling behavior, so they spread uh, vegetatively in ways that could be very useful for quickly trying to grow a forest margin. And uh, for the phylogeneticists out there, it's just crying out for an analysis of forest versus open habitat trees in Madagascar and comparisons with the same taxa in Africa, things like your Parker. Boria and uh, some of the Cunaniaceae. So I hope that that happens.